In step two of the assembly test drive, what we want to do is show you how we can place a, another part into this assembly. Now in order to do that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to come over to your parts library. Now I, I have mine set to collapsed or, or auto hide is set on so that when I'm done it just re, uh, kind of goes off the screen and gives me more viewing. But what you can do is just click on it and it's going to stay there as long as your, uh, uh, your cursor is over top of it. Now you'll notice for these parts that we're looking in the training folder and this is under where you loaded Solid Edge. So program uh, files, uh, Solid Edge ST, ST3 training folder. What we're looking for is uh, another part file. Now as you're looking through this and you notice that there's all kinds of, of files here, uh, we have a couple different ways. You can either view it as thumbnails, as large icons, you can even view it as a list if you'd like. Another option that we have is to set files of type. Now in this case, because I'm uh, looking for a part file, I've turned off assemblies, sheet metal, and weldments, uh, which kind of thins down the amount of information I have to look at. And that's an option that you can also set. Um, if you click on a file, we know that this uh, file that we're going to place is called nameplate. So if I key in an N, it automatically is going to scroll us uh, to that nameplate. And then at that point, I'm ready to bring it into the file. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is just click on it with my left mouse button click, click and hold, and just drag it into the assembly. When I do that, it automatically puts us in the assemble mode or the assemble command. You see it highlighted up here, but you also notice the ribbon bar. And what I want to do is just take a couple of minutes to explain the options that we offer in the ribbon bar when you're placing parts. The first option that's listed in ribbon bar is occurrence properties. Now this is an occurrence of that file and if I open this up it opens a dialog and shows us the active or the occurrence properties, its location X, Y, and Z. Uh, whether it's selectable or not in the assembly, whether it can be uh, viewed in a higher level assembly, and uh, also whether you want it as reference or not. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that you can do here. You can also uh, display in drawing views. So if you want it not to display in drawing views, you simply would change this to a no. So just some different options for occurrence properties that you can uh, look at. Another thing is when you are uh, placing this part into the assembly, do you want to use some of the construction geometry to help with that placement? In other words, this part has its own reference planes when it was created. We could turn those reference planes on or show them and then use them for the mates and the lines as we place this file. It shows you the uh, relationship that we're getting ready to, re to place. It is already set to um, uh, to the flash fit option, but there are other relationships, whether you want to place a mate, a planar align, a parallel, or a connect relationship. Another important point is the options, the assemble options. Inside of this options dialog, you'll notice that it's automatically defaulted to use flash fit. And we'll talk a little bit more about flash fit and how that works. It also is set to use reduced steps, so it's going to be a little bit quicker as we place these files by going to reduce steps. Now the automatically capture fit when placing parts is not turned on automatically, but capture fit allows you to place one part one time. It'll remember those relationships, so every other time you place it, uh, it won't ask anymore. It will automatically know what type of relationships you're going to place on that part. And then of course use distance between faces as default offset. If parts are not, you want to mate them together, but you don't want them to be um, zero gapped. You want them to use the default distance they already have. You would turn this on. In order to use this option, you'd have to use uh, the flash fit and reduce steps would have to be turned off. Now, as we've talked a little bit about flash fit, under flash fit, you'll notice there's a locate the following element types, planers, cylinders, circular. And those are the default ones we use. And basically what flash fit means is that we can uh, during the flash fit uh, placement, if I select a plane, it assumes I want to place a, a planar alignment or a mate. If I select a cylinder, it knows that I'm going to do an alignment. So it, it makes uh, selection a whole lot quicker, and we'll see how that works in just a minute. Uh, we do have options to activate parts. If parts over here are gray, uh, and, and in, 
it, that means that they're probably not active so you could actually activate parts we have an option for floating offset if you want to mate uh, two parts or align two parts and you don't really care what that distance is between them then you could use this but if you want to do a fixed offset then you would either leave it at zero or key in the value that you want to um, have that as that distance and then of course you have the uh, unlock rotation and lock rotation on um, um, axial alignment type relationships so at this point we're ready to go ahead and begin now to place this com particular component we're in flash fit and we're in the assemble command and so as I bring my cursor down you'll notice a little a mouse and three dots next to my cursor if I hesitate that means there are more selections It allows me to filter through the selections that are available if I right mouse button click it shows that I have that front plane but what I want to do is I want to make that back plane so I'll go ahead and click to accept that back plane you'll see that it highlights the next thing it, it's going to do is it's automatically going it, I've already picked a plane so it knows it's looking for a plane here and all I have to do is just click and it's going to mate that back face to the front face of uh, this particular uh, frame. Now you'll notice that it used a zero offset. If I would have keyed in a one millimeter, it would have been mated with a one millimeter offset uh, to that part. Now obviously it's not in the right location, and here's where Flash Fit comes into play. Instead of picking a plane now, if I pick a cylinder, it understands that I want to create a, an alignment. So as we create a relationship to this is going to be an alignment to that cylinder and you notice it automatically jumps into position. Now because that it's mated and it's aligned to one hole it still means that this part can actually spin so we need to pay, place the final alignment between these two holes. And now the part locks into position. Anytime a part's fully uh, positioned with relationships it goes to its natural uh, color. Now as we go back over here and look at Pathfinder, you'll notice now that nameplate 1 has been placed into our file as one of the, as one of the uh, uh, files listed in Pathfinder. And when I click on nameplate 1, you're going to see that those three relationships are there. The mate between the two faces with zero offset, a rotational unlocked relationship, and a second one between the two cylinders. So that's exactly what we were looking for when we placed this. So this just shows you Solid Edge has a wide variety of relationships that are needed to accurately construct uh, our digital assemblies. At that point, we're ready to go ahead and hit the Save button, and then you want to make sure that your students are caught up to you at this point.